As is Hashem, today's Ombud of Mesachis Brachos is Nundalad Amur Aleph. For Hashem, we're starting the ninth parak, the final parak of this Mesachta. And we discuss, we begin with uh, Nundalad Amur Aleph with three sections, beginning at the top of the page. The first section we're going to start with, we'll discuss in the Mishnah eight phenomena or unique situations that you make special Brachos of Shevach to Hashem, including other halachas. The second section will be the beginning of the Gemara, where we'll di- distinguish and clarify the difference between a public place of miracle and a private place of miracle. And in the final section, the third section towards the bottom of Nandal and we will see the Brisa will elaborate on eight locations where miracles happen to the Jewish people. We're supposed to thank Hashem if we see those locations. So as Hashem, let's get started at the top of the page. The Mishnah begins with the following, If somebody sees a place that miracles occurred for the Jewish people, so Omer, there is a special bracha that he's meant to make. Blessed is Hashem that he made miracles for our forefathers in this place. Tosfus here mentions that these brachas that we're about to mention relate, mention eight unique types of brachas. This is the first one. When you see a place of miracles, for example, as we see in the Gemara, the place of Kriyas Yamsuf. This week's Parsha, last week's Parsha. The place where the Jews crossed over the Yamsuf. So you make a special bracha that Hashem did miracles for us in that place. So Taisva says, Tzrichas la'az karas shem u'malchus. That Rabbeinu Shmaya explains, the Bali Taisvas explain, that it requires a shem u'malchus. Even though the mission doesn't say it clearly, it requires Hashem's name as well as mentioning Hashem is Melech HaOilam. Taisvis also says, which will be more clarified later in the Mishnah, that this would be when you see these places every 30 days. But we'll see that later in the Mishnah. Shalom. The second example of a unique bracha. If somebody sees a place that Avayda Zara was uprooted from. So the Lach is, Aymer is supposed to say the following bracha. Baruch she'akar aku me'artzenu. You should make a bracha, blessed is Hashem that he uprooted Avodah Zara from our lands. Now from the language of the bracha, me'artzenu, our lands, it implies, mm-hmm. this is if you see Avodah Zara that was uprooted in Eretz Yisrael. That is the implication of the bracha. Three, alazikim. Now, this is natural phenomena that a person would experience. Alazikin, the Gemara will clarify Zikin is uh, comets or shooting stars. Fala's voice, as well as if somebody experiences, what's voice? Um, Gemara will explain. What is voice? Farish Gemara, she says. Earthquakes. Ah, oh, I was trying to read my handwriting. I wrote something that I couldn't read it. <laughs> as well as if somebody experiences earthquakes, Valera yeah. Amim, or if somebody experiences thunder, Vala Ruchais, or if somebody experiences torrential winds, Vala Brokim, uh, lightning. Oimer, the bracha that he should say is, Baruch, blessed is Hashem. Again, like Taisva says, with Shemu Malchus, that his strength and his might fills the world. That's the third unique bracha. Let's go on to the fourth. Now, if he sees uh, the significant parts of Bria Sa'olam, Allah Harim, if he sees very tall mountains, Vala Gavais, or hills, Vala Yamim, the seas, Vala Naharis, or the rivers, Vala Midbaris, the deserts, Aymer, if he sees all of these things, he should say, Baruch. I say, some add in the word on the side, Sarah Sasha says, Masa Bereshis, blessed Hashem, who made the creations of. Uh, Creation, the creation of the beginning of Bracious. Rabbi Yudha, I'm Rabbi Yudha adds a fifth type of bracha, Haraya Sayama Gadol. Somebody sees the big sea, the great sea, meaning the Mediterranean. Oimer, you should say, Baruch Sha'asa Sayama Gadol, blessed is Hashem that he made this great sea, the Mediterranean Sea. Now the Mishnah says, Bizman Sharoi This is when he sees it infrequently. Meaning, if he sees it frequently, he doesn't make the bracha if he saw it recently. Only if you see it infrequently. So we're going to see in the Gemara, L'chayr, it's 30 days, which Taisus points out over here. And the Mepharshim also point out, this is in regards to seeing the locations that were unique that we listed. But when it comes to thunder, for example, if I uh, hear thunder today, and I hear it again tomorrow, since it's a different thunder, I'll make the bracha again, the next day. 
It's only the locations when I become accustomed to them, so then I don't make the bracha as frequently. But if I see every 30 days, then I'll make the bracha. Number six, ala gishamim, the rain, ve'al besuris toivas, or if there's good tidings, good news. A person should say, baruch ha-toiva ametiv, bless Hashem, who's got good and does good. And seven, Va'al Basuras Rais, Chas Vishalam, if he hears bad news, Oymer Baruch Daino Emes, he says, Bless Hashem, the truthful judge. Number eight, Bona Bayes Chadash, if he builds a new house, the Kona Kalim Chadashim, and he purchases new Kalim. Kalim could mean maybe clothing or perhaps even vessels. Oymer, so he says, Baruch Shech, Yenavi Kiyamanu, Vigyanu, Bless Hashem that he gave us life and the ability to re- live until today and experience these new wonderful things. Now, those are the eight unique brachas the Mishnah introduces. Continues the Mishnah regarding brachas in general, meaning now we just mentioned this idea that there's a difference between the bracha you say on good news and bad news, or a good happening and a bad happening. The Mishnah says, Mevarich ala ra'a me'ein al ha so the Gemara is going to explain, you make a bracha of Diana Emes if something is a, it appears to be a bad happening, even if there's a potentially good outcome. You'll still say Diana Emes. And similarly with Hatoiva Ametiv. If it appears to be good, you'll say Hatoiva Ametiv, even if there's a potential that it'll turn out in a uh, negative way as well. But the Mishnah tells us regarding davening, if somebody cries out in the past, meaning something that's already set, it's already happened, that's a tefillah shav. It's a tefillah in vain. It's a worthless tefillah. And the Mishnah gives a few examples. Haisa ishta milberes. A person's wife was already pregnant. And he says, Hashem's will should be that my child should be male. That's a worthless tefillah. It's a mundane tefillah because the child is already whatever it is. Now, before she becomes pregnant, you could daven. But after she's already pregnant, it doesn't help you to daven like that. Before they discover gender fluidity. Gender fluidity. Right? You could daven chas v'shalom. That would be nice. <laughs> Today you would say, yeah, we can change it later. Now, you can change it three years later. Ayay, ayay. Ayay, Baba Derech, a person was traveling on the way of Shama called Tzavach of and he heard crying out in the city in a negative way it means he heard some sort of a negative noise in the city and then he davens right? it shouldn't be in my house meaning whatever the disaster that's occurring people are crying out about it should be somewhere else again that's a tefillah shav because it's already it is or it's not but you can't daven about that I did see some say here if there's a fire in the city and it hasn't hit your house yet, so you could, da- I mean, not your, it hasn't hit yeah. someone's house yet, right, they right. could daven, please Hashem, make it not hit my house because it's not there yet. But if right. something's already happened, it's and already you happened. Know, you can't say, right, yeah. Correct, correct. Now, on this note, Hanichnas Lekrach, Sarashi so says we're talking about a person goes into a city that we know the leadership of that city are wicked people, and they're constantly trying to create negative scenarios for the Jewish people. So, in such a scenario, Mispal Shtaim, you should daven two tefillas. Achas beknisasai, one when he enters the city, ba'achas beetsiasai, and when one when he leaves, when he enters, he should daven that he should be uh, treated peacefully, and when he leaves, he should give thanks. When Azay and Benazi disagrees, he says, Arba, you should daven four tefillas. Shtayim beknisasai, vishtayim beetsiasai, two when he enters, two when he leaves, and this is also seemingly part of Benazai, noisen do al she'avar, he should give thanks on the past, vitzayak ala asid, and cry out about the future. We'll see in the Gemara, the Gemara will clarify these positions. Chayev Adam Levarich Ala Ra'a, Kishem Shem Levarich Ala Toiva, very famous sentiment, which is a person is Chayev to bless Hashem, even if it's something that's negative, just like if it's something that's positive. Now, it's not the same bracha. One is Diana Emesa, one is a Toiva Metiv, but you still have to give a bracha. That's the point. Where do we find this concept? Shanemar in Vaischan, when it talks about the Krishma, it says, So there's a series of drosses. We'll get eventually to the point that we just mentioned, but before that, it says you should love Hashem with all your heart. V'goymer. So, b'chol levavacha, b'chol with all your heart. It's a double lashon. It's a kudus libcha. Why does it say levavacha? Plural. B'shnei yitzrecha. It means with both of your inclinations. B'yetzer toiv of yetzer hara. There's a concept that not only do we serve Hashem with our yetzer toiv, but we also serve Hashem and bless Hashem with our yetzer hara. With all of your soul, what does it mean? It's the concept that we're supposed to be meiser nafshay nafshenu al kiddush Hashem, meaning we're supposed to serve Hashem with all of our heart, even with all of our soul. Even if He takes away our soul, we still serve Hashem. 
Now, when it says with all of your me'oid, what is that referring to? So, two pshatim. Either it means bechol ma'incha, me'oidecha can refer to as serving Hashem with all your money. And davar acher, and this is really why we brought this in, bechol ma'oidecha means bechol mida u mida shehu ma'oided lecha heve ma'oidelai. Whatever measure he meets out to you, you should give him thanks. So that's the idea, that you bless Hashem on the negative just like the positive. Even if it appears negative, you still bless Hashem. That's derived in the second drasha from now, the Mishnah continues on with a series of halachas regarding the Beis HaMikdash, appropriate conduct, etc. A person should not be lightheaded opposite the eastern gate of the of Yerushalayim. Because it's parallel opposite the place of the Kodesh HaKadashim. Rashi says something very interesting over here. He says, at least he's talking about Bayas Risha on the Chayra. He says that the openings, the entrances, were all parallel to each other. If you take a look at Rashi, Keneged Shar Mizrachi. You see that? Chutz l'harabayis, outside of harabayis, asher b'choyma in the wall, hanemuch, the lower wall, asher l'ragbe abayis b'mizrach. L'fi shekola sh'arim b'chuvanim zeh k'neged zeh. All of the entrances, the openings, were directly parallel to each other. Shar mizrach, shar ezras nashim, shvishar ezras yisrael, upesach ha'ulam v'aheichal, ubeis kodshi ha'kadoshim, b'yemei mikdash rishon k'shahoy ha'matraksin. Very interesting, is that you could be at a point where all of the... Yeah. Openings go straight into the opening of the Kodesh Kadashim. So therefore, if you're there, you shouldn't act in a lightheaded way because it's essentially in front of the Shechina, and that would in, be inappropriate. In the Gemara Yuma, don't we have that? You have to shaft the uh, the Aduma. Right. Right. The uh, the Baruchas, I think. Sound, sounds right. So, it's, so yep. you have to be able to see. Mm-hmm. Now, on that note, the Mishnah continues and says, You're not allowed to enter Harabayas in an inappropriate attire. Inappropriate means in a mundane way. So you shouldn't go in with your walking stick, with your shoes, with your money belt, the dirt on your feet. That's not appropriate. Nor are you allowed to use Harabayas as a shortcut. Uh, I heard some people say Kapandaria. I, I heard Kapandria though. <laughs> and certainly not let us spit there, that would be grossly inappropriate. So the question is, uh, how could Moshe buy the snare? It says Hashem told him to take off his shoes. Right. But he's still carrying the, he's still carrying the, uh, the stick. The stick, because he says to have the stick, so he had the stick with him. Oh, I hear. So That's interesting. He was holding a stick at the snare. Yeah, I'm saying you don't take off your shoes. So like this, you can't you can't walk in with your with your shoes, but you can holding a stick at this now. I hear what what do you say? I, it's not mine. I, I oh. saw it recently, but I can't remember what the difference. Mm. <laughs> like okay. the Rashi says, the question is usually better than this. Uh, was it was a good was a good I hear. Answer. I hear. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll try to listen. Very interesting. Rashi explains like this. In Bayas Rishon, this is what the Mishnah is teaching us. When they would say a bracha in the Beis HaMikdash, they used to finish off the bracha instead of like we do, which is Baruch HaTah Hashem Chayinen Adoas. Baruch HaTah Hashem Chayinen Adoas for the one who grants wisdom. So Rashi says instead they would say Baruch HaTah Hashem Elikei Yisrael Ad HaOilam Baruch Chayinen Adoas. That's what they would finish off brachas. And then the people would actually respond that's what was done in the base of Mikdash, not Omein. So the Mishnah tells us, They would say, means they would say that extended language that you're, Hashem, you're blessed in this world. But then, this is in the days of Ezra already. In the days of Ezra, when that seems like already by Shani, the Tzedukim started to create issues. The Amr, and they started to say, If you only say one Ada Oilam, so it sounds like Hashem's only in this world. There's only one world. So with Skin Ashio Aimrim, instead, the Chachamim Ezra based Dina Rashi says, establish, you should say, Mina Oilam viad Ha Oilam. Include in the language of the Brachas in the, in the Beis Amikdash from this world to the next world, so it's clear there's a next world, there's Chiaz Hamesim, unlike the Shita of the Tzedukim. This is a common sentiment we find, is that the tzedukim had real sway, and the chachamim went out of their way to make takanas so as to be hoitzim ilibam shel tzedukim, to refute the inappropriate positions of the tzedukim. 
Vihiskinu, and they also established, this is very interesting, Adam Shoyla Shloim Chaveroi B'Shem. A person should greet his friend with the name of Hashem, meaning a person should say, Sholem Aleichem, with the name of Hashem specifically. To a degree, we still do this today. Sholem is the name of Hashem. So we say, Sholem Aleichem, that's saying the name of Hashem. I saw one of the sheets is brought down, it was a ritva, if I remember correctly, I saw in one of the footnotes. It says the reason that this was so important is so that we should constantly have the name of Hashem, Shogar Bifinu. Constantly we should have the name of Hashem in our mouths. Where do we find a reference to this? Shanem, or like it says in regards to Boaz, Gilas Ros, it says, Vehine Boaz Bami Beis Lechem, Boaz was coming from Beis Lechem. Vayaymer Lekaitzrim, he said to the harvesters, Hashem Yimachem, Hashem should be with you. Vayaymer Lo Yivarecha Hashem, and they said, Hashem should bless you. And furthermore, there's the Pasuk in Shoftim. It says, when the Malach came to speak to Gidon, Hashem imcha gibor achayel, so he said to, the, to Gidon, Hashem is with you, mighty warrior. So again, he blessed Hashem with the name of Hashem, uh, he blessed Gidon with the name of Hashem. And furthermore, it's supposed to be in Tehillim, it says, Al tavuz imecha. Now, literally means, don't disgrace when your mother is old. But the way that Rashi explains this has to do is, it could be interpreted, zikna umecha, the elders of your nation, meaning whatever they used to do back in the day, don't denigrate that. Even though it seems a bit odd, he used the name of Hashem, it almost seems like you are using the name of Hashem in vain or using it for a unimportant reason. If that's what they used to do, there's a makar, it's the right thing to do to greet Hash, uh, people with the name of Hashem. For and similarly, the Pasuk tells us, Eis Lasois, Hashem Heferu Tarasecha. Pasuk says, Eis Lasois, uh, sorry, that last one was Mishli, this is uh, Tilim. Eis Lasois, Lashem Heferu Tarasecha. It says, there's a time to do for Hashem and we nullify your Torah, which some of Farshim learn. Rabbi Nassan, I'm Rabbi Nassan, explains, Heferu Tarasecha, that your Torah has become like mundane. Even though it appears like it's inappropriate that you're using Hashem's name for no good reason, but Mishum Eis Lasa Eis La Hashem. Because they made it a time to do for Hashem. So the way that we're interpreting this last verse is, even though it might appear to be inappropriate, if that's what Chachamim said you're supposed to do to greet Hashem, to greet people with the name of Hashem, that's also the right thing to do. So it shouldn't be denigrated. But Let's continue. Yeah, what? Thinking was that if it's done for cover, if it's like accepted for king, that's not appropriate. But if it's to like, use Hashem's name? No, no, no. I'm talking to walk into the business. If it's like something like you needed to walk with or something like that, that may be okay. Oh, I hear. That was it. That Interesting. Was, that was one. Yeah, I think that that's what it said. Like because it's, it's as like, like to exclude the cover of Hashem, you're saying. Yeah, right. So I hear? This wasn't. And I think, I, 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 was, I, I don't know the second one. I was mechavin a little bit to it that because he was a roy, he that that's part of what he did. It mm-hmm. wasn't like you know, uh, it wasn't for his covenant. Mm-hmm. Right? I hear. Right, I hear, I hear. The practical usage versus his own covenant. Yeah. I hear, interesting. Zag the Gemara, let's move on to the second section. Minani Mili, where do we find this idea? The first bracha, Nandal Ramadalf. Minani Mili, Zag the Gemara, where do we find this concept that a person is supposed to make a bracha when he sees a location that a miracle happened to the Jewish people? So, Amr Abyechan and Amr Krav, Mamish this week's parsha. Yisrael approaches the Jewish camp, and by Yomer Yisrael, Boruch Hashem, Asher Hitzil, Eschem, Yam, it's Ram, you know the whole story. Blessed Hashem that he saved you from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, from the, from the Mitzrayim. So the Gemara Vegaimer. So what do we see? We see that Yisrael saw the Jewish people who had experienced a great salvation, a miraculous situation, and he blessed them, blessed Hashem, upon seeing that. So the Mepharshim speak out, that's because he saw the people that had received this miraculous nace from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But in a similar vein, the Gemara is saying, if you don't see the people that experienced it, but you see the location where the miracle happened, it's also appropriate to make a bracha. That's the Mekar. Now the Gemara says our Mishnah would seem to imply Anisa de Rabbi Mevarchinon that if it's a public nace that it happened in that location you'll make a bracha but Mashma Anisa de Yachid Mevarchinon that if it's only a private nace you don't make a bracha problem is we know that that's not true and we're going to show three mysim three stories that clearly imply even if it's a private a place where a personal uh, uh, individual experienced an ace he also makes a bracha when he sees it because Vahu Gavra story number one there was a person he was going in a place called Ever Yamina, Nafale Arya, a lion jumped on him. It's Avid of Itzalmine. A miracle happened and he was saved. This fellow came in front of Rava, and Rava said, whenever you go there, you have to make a bracha. You have to make the bracha. Thank you, I bless you, Hashem, that you made a miracle for me in this place. Story number one. So we see a private a miracle does 
warrant a bracha when you go there. And number two, Mar braids Ravina, Mar the son of Ravina, have a ka'azil the pitka da arvas. He was going in the valley of Arvos. Vitzacha lemayan. He was very thirsty, meaning he was he was dying of thirst. It avid le nisa. A miracle happened. Ivri le ena demaya veishti, and a spring of water appeared, and he was able to drink. Miracle number one for him. And a third maisa also with Marbre de Ravina. Besuzim nechada another time. Have a kaazil beristika de mechuza. He was going in the marketplace of mechuza. Venafa le gamla pritza. A crazy, a deranged camel jumped on him. Apparently very dangerous. So it it parka le ashisa. The wall opened. Opened up like a wall split. Oh, Gava, he went inside and he was saved. And so Mar Braids Ravina's Minag was following this. Kimatala Aravas, when he would go to that first location, Aravas, Baruch, he would make a bracha, Baruch Sha'asali Nespa Aravas, Uve Gamal. Meaning he would include the second miracle as well, not to denigrate that, but he would put it second. So he would say, Bless Hashem that he made a miracle for me in Aravas, as well as with the camel. And Kimatala Ristika de Mechuza, and when he would go to the place, the market of Mechuza, Baruch, he would make a bracha, Baruch Sha'asali Nespa Gamal. He would add in the first miracle secondary to the Gummel because that's where he was currently. But the point is, what you see is that an individual also makes such a bracha. It's not only when a when public experience a miraculous thing. The Gummel and the water happened in one shot. It was it. There wasn't a big intermission between one and that's on the other. I think it sounds like two different locations, Bechlau. Yeah, but it would happen one after the other, could be. That's why he makes the bracha. It could be, but I think it's Zimnachada. Zimnachada sounds like another time. It sounds like a different time altogether. Yeah, the point is, to not include it both in the same, it would almost be like a, to be kafoy toiv, is to say that one wasn't so important. So you include it as the back end. But the point is, you see that even for a yeah, personal yeah. miracle, you make a brach in that place. So Ami the Gemara says, no, you have to understand what the Mishnah is saying. Anisa de Rabim, when it comes to a place that the public experience, Kuliyama Mechai Velivruche, anyone who passes by has to make a bracha. Anisa de Yochid, when it comes to an individual, Iyu Chayev Velivruche, he is Chayev. So in those stories, not a Kasha, they were Chayev because it happened to them, but other people who passed by there wouldn't make a bracha. There's a Gra here who adds something very interesting in. Nirabe Enai, Ubre Ubar Bre. He, Children. and also his son and his and grandson. grandson. So it sounds like since it happened to my father in this place, when I pass by way. also, I also have to make a bracha according to this girsa. Very interesting. Girsa saga oinim varif. Very interesting does idea. Mean, does that mean like it becomes a family? It's a family affair. Or, or just, just two doras? I don't know. He brings down nirab ene ubre ubar bre. I don't know if it goes say? beyond. doesn't say beyond that. So but very interesting. And, um, yeah, I don't know beyond that. Maybe not. That or not. That's an interesting that's question. Not sure. Very interesting. Let's go weiter. Now the third section of the day. So now the Bryce is going to tell us eight locations where the Jewish people experienced a tremendous salvation. And when we pass by there, we're chayef to give shevach to Hashem to make this bracha. We'll see. One of them maybe is different. But Tanurabanan. The Bryce says as follows. We'll go through three of them today. If somebody sees the place where the Jews crossed over the Yamsuf, we just did it last week, in the Yamsuf, or the place where Yeshua ben Nun brought the Jewish people over the Jordan, over the Yarden, when they crossed into Eretz Yisroel. The crossing place of Nachle Arnon, we'll see about this later today. Avne Algavish, if he sees the place of the stones of Algavish, Ben Morid Beishurun, and the descent of Beishurun, we'll go through each of these, what they are. Number that was number four. The Evan Shebikesh Lizrak Oig Melchabosh Nal Yisrael receives the stone that Oig wanted to throw on the Jewish people. Number six. The Evan Shiyasha Valeh Moshe B'Shasha Asa Yeshua Melchama Ba'Amalek. If he sees the stone that Moshe sat on it when Yeshua fought against the, the Amalek was was uh, last week's parsha. Seven, the Ishtai shall light, or he sees the pillar of salt that was what Light's wife turned into. And eight, the Chaima Yericha, Chemas Yericha Shinivla Bim Kaima, or he sees the wall of Yericha that had become absorbed into the ground when the Jews miraculously conquered the city at the beginning of their conquest of Eretz Yisrael. Al Kulan Sarch Shiit and Aida Veshevach Lafneamakaim, about all these things he has to give, praise and thanks to Akarish Baruch. We'll see in the Gemara, most of these are the same Baruch we started off in the Mishnah when you see a place that Shah the bracha that we said. One of them might be a little bit different. We'll see that later. So let's go through these different things and understand what was the miracle. So some of them are more obvious. The Gemara says, We know the miracle that happened when they crossed over the Yamsuf. We had last week. They crossed over in the middle of the sea on dry land. So we understand you have to give Shevach. 
Ma'abra Sayyari, in the second one, when Yeshua crossed over the Jordan, we know the Kohanim stepped into the Yardin, which had turned into dry land. They stood firmly there. And the whole nation was able to pass until. Uh, they, they, and they stood there until the entire nation passed the yarding. So we know those miracles. We know why you have to give thanks. But what is this story of Nachale Arnon that we said the third place of miracle, you have to give a Shevach to Hashem? So this is a very uh, in, nondescript Pasuk we're about to talk about. Very interesting story. When the Jewish people were entering Eretz Yisrael, I just want to speak this out, they were crossing over a area where there was a valley between two mountains. On one side it was the territory of Moyav, on the other side it was a Mori territory. And as we'll see, Kaddish Baruch Hu made a miracle for them there, and that's where we would be chayef to make this bracha. So what is it? The Pasuk tells us, We say in the book of the wars of Hashem, as Vohev Besufa. It says, Vohev at its end, the Goimer. And it's a very vague Pasuk. So Tana, the Bryce explain as follows. Es vahev besufa, this pasuk, shnei mitzayroyim hayu. They were two people who were mitzayroyim. To have umahachin besayf machane Yisrael. So there were two Jews who were mitzayroyim that were traveling in the back of the encampment. That was important because they saw the miracle. We'll get to it later. One was named Es and one was named Hev. So Es vahev, two mitzayroyim traveling in the back of the Jewish encampment. When the Jews were passing by this narrow path between two mountains, one side was Amori, one side was Moavi territory. Also Amoroi, Avdi The Amoriim, turning to Nadalim and Beis, went up to the area of the Moavim on a mountain, carved out a cave, and they hid inside of it. Amri, they said, Kichalfi Yisrael Hacha. When the Jews pass by here, Naktalinon will throw stones and spears and kill them. But they didn't know the Aron have a maski kamayu the Israel. The Aron, this is a little bit different than the way Rashi quotes it on the Chumash, but that the Aron used to go in front of the Jewish people. Some of the Aron traveled three days in front that held the uh, broken luchas inside of them. And a miracle happened because of this Aron. It would flatten mountains in front of the Jewish people. Kiva da Asa Aron, when the Aron passed by this area, Idvikuturi Bahade Adadi Vikatlinon. These mountains crushed together, they became uh, squeezed together, and it killed these Amoriim that were attempting to ambush and kill the Jewish people. Vinachas Damayu Lenachale Arnon, and the blood of these Amoriim descended into Nachale Arnon, this valley that the Jews passed through. Now, the entire encampment had passed already, they didn't see this blood coming down. But Es Vahev, these two guys, he also es vohev, when these two guys, es and hev, came, chazu dama de kanafek mi beni tzuri. So they saw blood coming from between the mountains. Asu va'amru lo the Yisrael, they told the Jewish people, va'amru shira, and they said shira because of the miracle that Hashem did for them. Hanu dechsev, that's what it means when it says in the Pasuk, there, the eshet on the the outpouring of the canyons, asher natal ha'sheves, when it veered to uh, dwell or to sit, ar venisha, uh, ar, Venishan Ligvul Moyav, leaning towards the boundaries of Moav, meaning that these two mountains came together, killing these people that would be ambushers, saving the Jewish people. Okay, we're going to stop here. We'll continue on with the fourth item in this list, the fourth place in this list tomorrow with Nandalad Amud Beis. Stopping towards the top of Nandalad Amud Beis. Everyone have a wonderful day.